the 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro has been released. So many of you guys are probably still running a 2012 to 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. So let's just take a look and see if it's worth finally upgrading to the new MacBook Pro from the older MacBook Pro. The Touch ID is now separated from the still existing touch bar and the escape key is also separated and the large touchpad remains. The OG MacBook still has the functional keys of course with the smaller touchpad. The bezels have been significantly reduced which gives it a very nice modern look, both side bezels and top and bottom bezels. When the laptops are placed on top of each other, you actually really can't tell the difference of size because they're extremely similar. They're so similar, if you look from the front, it would be kind of hard to tell which one's which, but the newer one is more slimmer. In terms of weight, it's around 1.955 kilograms for the new one and around 2.032 kilograms for the old one. In terms of ports, we have the same two Thunderbolt 3 ports where we have MagSafe, Thunderbolt 2 Dual, USB-A, and headphone on the older one. On the opposite side, we have our headphone jack and two more Thunderbolt 3 ports, whereas we have a USB Type-A, a HDMI out, and of course the SD card reader, which I use a lot still. It was sad to see this not be included. In terms of the touchpad, it's very smooth and of course Apple makes the best touchpads out of any manufacturer I've ever tried. Even the old MacBook Pro, the feel is extremely similar and even zooming in and zooming out feels exactly the same, so it's really good. The 16 inch MacBook Pro now has a scissor style magic keyboard, so let's see how they sound with each other with the 15 first. And now for the newer one, let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Moving on to the displays. With both displays turned up all the way, I want to say the newer MacBook Pro has a better display overall. The True Tone display really makes the colors look better in my environment, whereas the 2013 MacBook Pro is kind of too bright in some areas. So I definitely want to say that the 16-inch MacBook Pro looks better and has a better resolution. And in viewing angles, I'd say they're pretty much tied. It was really hard for me to see a difference between the viewing angles in real life. One thing I wanted to point out is the boot performance. For some reason, my older MacBook Pro booted faster and I tested this multiple times. And what's really interesting about that is the older MacBook Pro has a bunch of stuff on it and I actually ran the beta and then updated to the final version on that one as well. So that one really needs a clean installation. But for some reason, the newer MacBook Pro just takes a longer time to boot up. And I have set up everything on the newer one. So that's one thing to keep in mind. However, in daily tasks, you're not going to find much of a difference in performance. This is something that's been the case in pretty much most generations. But unless you're really loading something that's intensive, such as Logic Pro X, it will be faster on the newer MacBook Pro. But do keep in mind the difference is very small. So they perform really similar in day-to-day -day tasks. Now, I want to go ahead and add my Hackintosh build into this mix to kind of simulate a Mac Pro 2019, which has a 9900K 8-core and a Radeon 7. So you can go ahead and pause these to get a closer look, but as you can see, the 16-inch MacBook Pro gets a very nice 3550 Cinebench R20 score. And one thing to note is I looked online at other people's performance, and people who bought the more expensive 8-core didn't really perform that much better. So I think it might be better to get the lower 8-core actually, because performance is very similar. Now in Geekbench 4, the 2013 just got whooped. It's basically twice as fast in multi-core and this is going to be the norm in all these benchmarks in multi-core because it does have twice the core count. In terms of temperature for Geekbench 4, the 16 inch did get hotter. It ran at 91 where the, eight, the 86 is for the 2013 but that's not too much of a difference. In Geekbench 5, we finally see that the 16 inch MacBook Pro gets 69.31. And we finally have a Mac Pro 2019 kind of comparison in a way of 8962. Both of these CPUs have 8 cores, but a 4.7 GHz all-core turbo does beat the 16 inches turbo. So for people holding off on the new Mac Pro, this gives you an idea. In terms of temperatures, all three systems reached 100 basically. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the Air 51M 
and the 2013 MacBook Pro are not undervolted as far as I know from the factory, whereas the 16 inch should have a undervolt applied in Mac OS. So in Windows, this could be a different scenario. For Geekbench 5 GPU, the 16 inch MacBook Pro GPU is way faster than the 2013, 2014, 2012, and even the 2015 MacBook Pro. The new GPU is actually decent and it can compete with something like a 1660 Max Q in gaming desktops. So if you want to lightly game, I did the video on the MacBook Pro review. You can check that out where I play a few games and it's definitely capable of doing that. Obviously compared to a Hackintosh, which by the way, those results are not accurate. The Radeon 7 should perform faster, similar to the RTX 2080. This is one issue in Hackintosh, and that is the Radeon 7 in my setup is not being utilized all the way. And if you're going to get a Mac Pro 2019, keep in mind that your performance will be much better than this in GPU performance, but CPU should be very similar on the base model. So let's move on. Looking at Logic Pro X's bounce, we got 13 seconds on the Retina MacBook Pro and 9.5 seconds on the 16 inch. Now do keep in mind that these results are in seconds but they do scale linearly so a larger project will take about the same amount of time difference in this situation as well. Looking at temperatures, it's not that interesting because the Logic Pro X bounce doesn't seem to use all of the cores so this is more of a single core GPU temperature. For Final Cut X, um, we got something really interesting here. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro actually beat the Air 51M. And I ran this a few times and this was the result each time. So I'm not sure what happened there, but more importantly, the Retina MacBook Pro got beat by quite a bit. So again, this does scale linearly and this is in minutes now. So the new MacBook Pro does a much better job than the old one in rendering applications. So for overall CPU performance, you can assume a 83% overall performance increase over the Retina models, and this includes single and multi-threaded applications. The Air 51M gets a 115% increase, so that's where a 8-core Mac Pro would kind of stand in between these. For battery life, the 16 inches 100 watt hour battery is amazing. I was able to get 482 minutes using my stress test, and this is a pretty realistic stress test in my opinion. And even the MacBook Air only got 518 minutes, so that kind of gives an idea of how powerful the stress test is. The Air 51M, of course, is desktop grade components, so 84 minutes is not that great. My MacBook Pro Retina and the MacBook Air, of course, have older batteries, so that does kind of skew the results a little bit, but they're still under what's considered good health. They're both under 500 cycles, so that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, let's listen to the fan noise of both systems now. One thing I wanted to mention is the exclusive feature on the newer MacBook Pros, I believe 26 and newer only support this, and that's Sidecar. This allows you to use an iPad as a secondary display. This is not a feature available in the 2013, and if you know how to make this work, do let me know. With that said, if you don't mind losing MagSafe, USB Type-A, and if you don't mind losing the SD card reader and the HDMI, then this is a great computer. You're gonna need a dongle like this to definitely enjoy everything about the computer. But with that said, the computer has better speakers, better display, better touchpad, better performance, basically better everything. I mean, the keyboard is the only thing, honestly. And even the new keyboard is pretty good. So with that said, hope this helps. I can definitely recommend the new MacBook Pro. And I'll see you guys in the next one.